welcome back. Hello, welcome back to Learn Economia. In this video, we are going to discuss a cooperative credit structure. We have to understand that uh, there was a movement in India which is known as a cooperative movement and it was started especially for dealing with the problem of rural credit. We have to understand that when there was the introduction of banking system in India, they mostly concentrated in urban areas. So, the rural people, they were actually suffering a lot because they were not getting credit. So, uh, we could see that the history of Indian cooperative banking, it started with the passing of the Cooperative Societies Act in 1904. And the main objective of this act was to establish some kind of cooperative credit societies to encourage thrift, self-help, cooperation, etc. Mainly among the people who are agriculturists, artisans, as well as the people with limited means. We could understand that agriculturists, uh, artisans, etc., are the ones who are mainly concentrated in the rural area. So, this rural cooperative credit or this cooperative uh, movement were basically focused on uh, rural population. Many cooperative credit societies were set up as a part of this cooperative credit act of 1904. And uh, we could see that the cooperative societies act of 1912 it has recognized the need for establishing some kind of new organization to deal with uh, aspects like supervision of credit, auditing of credit, supply of cooperative credit, etc. What were the organizations? So, this actually consists of a union uh, which would uh, comprise of certain primary societies. And also, there were many banks and uh, central banks as well as provincial banks. So here we are not referring to the Reserve Bank of India when we are saying central banks. As we all know, it is the Reserve Bank of the country which is known as the central bank. But in this case, the central bank in the sense that the banks which have got some more power. Okay. In the beginning, we could see that uh, establishment of cooperative societies, extension of cooperative credit, all, all were there. But the progress of this would, uh, this actually remained unsatisfactory, especially in the pre-independence field. We could understand that the Britishers, even though they have introduced this banking system and all in India, all these were just for the, uh, just for the, uh, just for helping the Britishers themselves. It was not to help India that they uh, started all these kinds of uh, uh, arrangements in India. Even after uh, operation, even after its operation for half a century, we could see that the cooperative credits, it formed only 3.1% of the total rural credit. Uh, and this means that they couldn't cater to the rural needs, even though they went for many acts. Here we have to understand what is the structure of cooperative bank. Cooperative banking, uh, when it deals, is actually as its word suggests, it deals with cooperative credit. And uh, this can be classified into agricultural as well as non-agricultural. In the case of agricultural credit, uh, they will give credit mainly to the agriculture sector. And this can be further divided into short-term agriculture credit institutions and long-term agricultural credit in institutions. The short-term agricultural credit institution, it deals with the short-term uh, financial needs of the farmers, agriculturists, etc. And they have a three, three, three tier federal structure, starting with the apex uh, body where, uh, where, there is state, where there are state cooperative banks. Then at the district level, there are central cooperative banks. And at the village level, there are primary agriculture society. And coming to the long-term agricultural credit, this is mainly provided by the land development banks in India. The whole structure of cooperative credit institution uh, is shown here. We could see that the cooperative credit institution is divided into urban cooperative credit institution and rural cooperative credit institution. Under urban cooperative credit institution, you have both scheduled as well as non-scheduled uh, non uh, entities. Uh, under schedule, you have uh, multi-state and also opening and also uh, multi-state credit institutions and uh, uh, uni-state credit institutions. Multi-state means 
it would be operating in uh, different states simultaneously and uni state means it would be operating at a particular state at a time and in the case of uh, non scheduled uh, credit institutions also we could see both multi state as well as unit state coming to the rural cooperative credit institution here we have both long term and short term in the case of long term uh, this uh, th there is a hierarchy starting with the uh, state cooperative bank uh, under that there are district cooperative uh, or district central cooperative banks under district central cooperative bank we have primary agricultural credit societies in the case of long term we have a state cooperative agriculture and rural cooperative bank and primary cooperative agriculture and rural cooperative bank so uh, the structure of cooperative network uh, actually we could see that there there are of two types rural as well as urban in the case of urban we have both uh, uh, scheduled and not scheduled and uh, in the case of rural we have short term as well as long term uh, all these things were dis uh, descri described earlier in the uh, flowchart when we were discussing the flowchart and let's understand uh, a little bit more about the short term cooperating banks uh, which come under the rural cooperative credit society so here the uh, it starts with the state cooperative banks in the apex level uh, and then we have district cooperative uh, bank uh, locally, uh, operating at each of the district then primary agricultural society of operating at the grassroots level so um, actually we have to understand that the state cooperative agriculture and rural development banks they operate at the state level and primary cooperative agriculture and rural development bank operate at the district level and the rural cooperative bank uh, it is considered to be a complex uh, it these have a complex monitoring structure and as a result uh, it is uh, it is very difficult to deal with many of the problems uh, which come uh, and which come uh, especially in the working of uh, these uh, cooperative societies a forum called state level task force and cooperative union banks were set up to deal with the issues related to uh, duality in the country all banking activities regulated by shared arrangement between reserve bank of india as well as nabard especially with respect to uh, agricultural credit so that's all for today please like share and subscribe to this channel for more video and you can be a part of my telegram group and telegram channel to discuss your doubts i will be providing the links of both my telegram channel and telegram group in the description box so that's all thank you